What's going on guys? Welcome back, Leo Pazzo Productions. Thank you very much for tuning in. In today's video, we're gonna be having a closer look at this brand new sim racing hardware kit made by PXN. This is the V10. So guys, this all-in-one sim racing kit, the V10, comes with everything that we need. It comes with the wheelbase, it comes with a steering wheel that's actually detachable, it comes with an H-pattern shifter with six gears and reverse, and we also have included with this kit a three-pedal kit. All the hardware and mounting options as far as mounting the wheelbase and steering wheel to your desk, for an example, or your sim racing rig is all included, all the cables everything that we need straight here right out of the box and I will mention there is also an app that we can download from the App Store and we can control such settings as the force feedback the steering wheel angle etc this sim racing kit works with PC and console PS4 Xbox Series S and Xbox Series X Guys, there's lots of information to cover in this video. First things first, we're gonna go ahead and unbox it, show you what comes included in the kit. I'm gonna also be going ahead and showing you how to set it up, which is pretty straightforward. And I'm also going to be sharing with you guys some gameplay. And at the end of this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you guys my overall thoughts and opinion and review of this kit. So stick with me guys. Let's go ahead and start off with the unboxing so you guys can see what comes included in the kit. So guys, let's have a closer look at the actual wheelbase itself. This is a dual motor gear driven wheelbase with 3.2 newton meters of force feedback. It is mostly made out of plastic. We do have this metal mounting base over here that's going to allow us to mount it to our desk. So we do also have this mounting option here on the front of the wheelbase which is going to allow us to simply install the steering wheel or take off the steering wheel from the wheelbase. Having a closer look here at the back of the wheelbase, we do have some connections over here and they're actually pretty nicely laid out. This one cable that is hardwired to the wheelbase is actually the USB which is going to be getting plugged into your console or PS4 or PC. Right above that we do have the power cable which is obviously included which is going to get plugged into the wall so we can supply power. So just above the power connection over here we do have this RJ11 which looks like a network ethernet connection and that's going to be simply connected from our pedal kit which we're going to have a look at shortly to 
to the actual wheelbase itself and that's how they're going to be able to communicate right above that we do have this red little switch which is going to allow us to simply and quickly change our steering angle which is preset over here at 900 degrees and all the way down to 270 degrees so it's nice to kind of see that we have the switch that we can kind of just switch on the fly as far as the car that we're going to be driving and we can go ahead and change the steering angle that way along with being able to do it within the game and right above that we do have the connection over here for the H pattern shifter which we're going to be able to simply connect from the H pattern shifter directly here to the back of the wheelbase so over here to the bottom left hand side at the back of the wheelbase we do also have another USB connection which is going to be used for when we want to connect it to our controller so we can go ahead and access the menu and whatnot if you're going to be using the PS4 or the Xbox so it's nice to see that we also do have that option over there so we can go ahead and go through the menu and the settings etc once we have it connected to our controller via this USB connection so guys it's actually nice to see that we're only going to be needing two USB ports to connect all of these devices to our PC for an example the one USB cable from the back of the wheelbase connected to the PC and then we're also going to need another USB cable from the back of the pedals to the PC as far as the shifter goes the shifter again is going to be connected here to the back of the wheelbase and that's how it's going to communicate to our PC so it's nice to see that we're only actually using two USB ports to connect all of these devices so guys we can actually adjust the angle of the wheelbase and along with the steering wheel once we have it mounted onto our sim racing cockpit or even onto our desk we have a screw over here onto the left hand side we have another screw over here onto the right hand side you just want to go ahead and simply take those out with the allen key that is provided and now you can go ahead and adjust the angle of the wheelbase and along with the steering wheel and once you found that angle that works best for you just go ahead and screw back in those screws so as far as mounting the wheelbase and steering wheel to our desk we do have included these two heavy duty plastic clamps over here little mounting option brackets that are just going to go ahead and simply just go over the base of the wheelbase the little metal piece there at the bottom and then this little part here at the bottom is going to go underneath the desk and all we need to do is just go ahead and tighten up this little allen key little screw over here at the top of these clamps and therefore now we're going to have a nice secure wheelbase mounted to our desk or to our sim racing cockpit so now that you guys are a little bit more familiar with the wheelbase itself let's have a closer look at the steering wheel so guys here we are with the steering wheel again you'll notice right off the bat it is very small and compact which measures approximately nine and a half inches in diameter it does have the sort of micro suede wrapped around the steering wheel we do have this little marker here which is in red which is the top dead center so we can go ahead and see that it is calibrated once we have it connected to our system and we do also have these little paddles here at the back these little paddle shifters are going to allow us to obviously shift in the gear, upshift and also downshift. They are made out of aluminum. We do also have quite a few buttons over here at the front that we can go ahead and program and assign within our game. And overall, we do have some metal over here at the front of where the buttons are. The buttons feel fine. There's no really much complaints about it. We do also have this nice red stitching along the inside as well. So not only is the steering wheel small and compact, but it is also lightweight, which is going to work fantastic as far as working with the actual wheelbase that it is paired with again the wheelbase is 3.2 newton meters of force feedback so therefore what that means is that the wheelbase doesn't need to work so hard to translate that force feedback to the steering wheel it doesn't actually have to work that hard because the steering wheel is small and it also is lightweight so all in all it seems like it's well designed and it is also working well so right here at the front of the wheelbase in the center we do have a button which is the home button and right above that we do have a red LED which is basically going to indicate if the force feedback is actually activated or it's deactivated according to what game you're playing so we do have the option to go ahead and turn it off if we'd like to. So as far as connecting the steering wheel to the wheelbase you just want to go ahead and simply just line it up like so and now we just want to go ahead and turn this little threads over here this quick release or quick connect and once it's fully tight boom now we're in action now we got the steering wheel connected to the wheelbase let's go ahead and have a closer look at the shifter next 
So here we have the V10 shifter. Again, as I mentioned earlier, this is a gated H pattern shifter with six gears along with reverse. For you to access reverse, you actually need to press down on the shifter like so, bring it over to the sixth gear and then bring it down and that's going to activate the reverse. And again, the shifter overall, it does feel nice. It does feel like it's nice and clicky going into gear. And I will say that the majority of the shifter is actually made out of all plastic. We do also have this little clamping style over here that's going to simply mount to our desk. That is actually the only way that we're going to be able to mount this shifter is via this plastic clamp over here. Overall, it does work well. It doesn't seem like there's any flex or movement when you're actually using it. But I will mention to you guys from my experience, this clamp over here actually only opens up at approximately about an inch and a half or just over about an inch and a half. And therefore, I just wanted to kind of point that out to you. I was luckily enough that I have a custom built sim racing cockpit pit that I was able to kind of uh, modify a little bit so I can simply go ahead and mount this to my sim racing cockpit but just keep that in mind this opening over here is only approximately about an inch and a half so at the back of the shifter we do have the short little cable over here that has this kind of little special connection this connection is actually going to be connected to another cable that's going to get connected to the back of our wheelbase I will mention or point out that we do have those little metal threads over here that's going to allow us to not only connect it to that other cable but also tighten it up so it doesn't come apart I will also point out to you guys that we do also have these two buttons over here at the top of the shifter which one of the buttons over here onto the right hand side is going to be to activate your parking brake depending if you go ahead and assign that within your game if you need a parking brake and we do also have a low and a high gear button that's going to allow us to tell the shifter if we want to be in a high gear or low gear depending if you're going to be playing any kind of trucking games for an example let's Let's go ahead and have a closer look at the pedals now. So guys, having a closer look at the V10 three pedal kit, we have the accelerator over here onto the right. We got the brake in the middle and the clutch on the far left. You'll notice right off the bat, we have this nice metal plate diamond cut right over here, along with the metal pedals on each one of the pedals over here. We can also adjust the pedals from left to right to kind of adjust the positioning. There are six holes on each pedal along with two screws, so we can kind of fine tune them a little bit to exactly where we'd like to left or right to kind of accommodate us if we turn it around over here around the back of the uh, pedal kit you'll notice that we do have these three different springs we have a blue one for the accelerator the red one for the brake and the green one for the clutch the really cool thing about these springs over here is that we can actually adjust the tension on how hard or how soft we want to be able to press that pedal so just for an example you'll notice that we do have these two plastic nuts over here at the bottom on these threads and we can basically either tighten it up or loosen it up and that's going to adjust the pressure and the tension of those springs so right off the bat right out of factory the accelerator is actually pretty easy and soft to press so we can go ahead and adjust that along with the brake and along with the clutch so what I've done in my case I've adjusted all of these to increase the tension as much as possible but by factory by default the brake spring is actually by default harder to compress because it is a little bit stronger and thicker spring but again in my case what works best for me what I like I've tightened them all up all the way so they can have as nice a strong compression as possible right here on the back of the pedal kit we do have these two connections the RJ11 which looks like the network Ethernet connection which is actually going to be connected here from the back of the pedal kit to the back of the wheelbase so they can communicate and we also do have a USB connection which is going to be connected from the back of the pedal kit to our PC. I will say that the build quality construction, it is majority made out of plastic. The dimensions I'm going to estimate over here is about maybe 16 inches from left to right, approximately maybe 16 inches from front to back and about from the bottom all the way up to the top I'm going to say about maybe eight inches or so again I'm just estimating and as far as mounting this we do have actually uh, four threads over here at the back of the pedal kit one over here one over here one over here one over here so we can actually mount this to our sim racing rig but we can also if we don't have a sim racing rig or some way to actually mount it to our setup we can actually just simply place it on the ground onto the floor because we do have these little rubber 
rubber pads over here. So overall, from my experience using this pedal kit, I will say that you're probably going to want to somehow mount it to your rig or mount it to your floor, something like that, that is kind of going to help to make it stay stationary. But again, we do have those two options again to mount it or to simply just rest it onto our floor. So guys, to give you an example on the compression and pressure that you're going to need to apply to each one of these pedals, for an example, right over here, the accelerator, I can simply push it down with two fingers and I can compress it down all the way. On the brake, on the other hand, it's actually going to be taking quite a bit more force. I can feel that it's much stronger. Again, I did adjust each one of these springs at the back of the pedals to be as strong as possible. And as far as the clutch goes, on the other hand, it does feel a little bit stronger than the accelerator, but not as strong as the brake but overall I'm very pleased with the adjustments that we have here at the back of it and again I would like to mention that we can also adjust the settings of these pedals within the PXN app and we can also adjust the settings for an example like the force feedback and also the steering angle etc within the app for the wheelbase and the steering wheel so it's really nice feature to be able to have that app that we can just simply have the game open and change the settings right there on the fly so we can kind of just feel what works best for us. So guys, now that you're more familiar with the wheelbase, the steering wheel, the shifter, the pedals, all the cables, all the different mounting options, etc., why don't we go ahead and set it up on my sim racing cockpit and share with you guys some gameplay. Let's jump right into it.
Well guys, it looks like we reached that time of the video to give you my overall thoughts and opinion and review of the V10. As I mentioned earlier, I have been using it now for the last few weeks or so on my PC and there are several things that I am pretty impressed with with this V10 and there are a few things that I'd like to see possibly improved in a future model. So first off, let's start off with the positive things. I will say that everything that comes included in the kit for the price that we're paying, this is definitely a great option for an entry level kit. So so if you are interested in getting into sim racing, if you do not have any equipment and you basically don't want to buy piece by piece by piece and kind of spend quite a bit of money and possibly even wait to kind of get everything, this would be a fantastic option. Again, the base, the steering wheel, the pedals, the shifter, you're pretty much plug and play kit. So I'm going to say that is a fantastic option if you are getting into sim racing. So overall, the general functionality of all these devices, I will say that it does seem like all of the devices are actually working quite well again the wheelbase at 3.2 newton meters i wish the force feedback was a little bit stronger because i'm kind of used to approximately 9 newton meters of force feedback so at 3.2 it does seem a little bit low for my liking so that is actually like a personal preference that i like it to be a little bit more stronger so that would be something that i would like to see possibly in a future model for an example to have a little bit more stronger force feedback but overall we can mount the wheelbase to our desk or a sim racing rig we do have the mounts and the clamps provided we can also adjust the angle we can also remove the steering wheel from the wheelbase which is nice just in case you want to go ahead and put it away or just for in general to make it a little bit more compact and easy setup so as far as the setup of the V10, it is actually quite fast and easy, plug and play type of a kit. We have all of the cables and all the mounting hardware. We can mount the wheelbase along with the shifter. So as far as the shifter goes, in general, yes, it is made out all of plastic, but overall it does perform quite well. I will say that the mounting option, again, as I said, it is made out of plastic, but it only opens up to about an inch and a half. So it would be nice maybe on a future model to make the clamp possibly out of metal or the whole shifter out of metal, but not only that, to basically have the clamp being able to open up more than about an inch and a half again i was able to mount it to my sim racing rig but i was very close nice and tight the actual place where i was mounting it onto my desk the shifter was pretty much an inch and a half so i was just able to kind of slide it on there and tighten it up but overall yes it is made out of plastic but it is mounted quite nicely nice and firm and it does feel nice when you're actually using the shifter it does perform quite well as far as the pedals to be honest with you yes they are made out of plastic but overall they are performing quite well i really do like the fact that we can adjust the pressure the tension the compression of the springs on each pedal along with being able to adjust the settings within the app i really do like the fact that they have the app because you can literally have it open while you're playing and adjust all the settings it also even tells us and explains what type of games that we can play on our ps4 on our pc etc so i really do think the app is very helpful it even has a link to the owner's manual just in case you lose the paper hard copy of the owner's user manual so the app is actually very impressive as well so as far as the steering wheel goes, the steering wheel does work quite well. I wish that it was a little bit bigger. It is kind of on the smaller side. And also, I'm not really too much of a fan of a D-shaped steering wheel because it's kind of flat on the bottom, but it hasn't really been affecting me in my gameplay. So overall, it's just kind of like a personal preference. Along with the microfiber suede, it is nice feel. It does feel good in the hands. Not really any issues so far, but it might be an issue maybe in the future, as I was mentioning earlier. It might kind of wear out might not be easy to clean etc but hopefully it kind of holds up for me and i also do really like the red stitching on the steering wheel and all the buttons positioned and whatnot and it overall it does feel pretty good so as far as the paddle shifters on the back of the steering wheel they are made out of aluminum and it seems like they're working quite well as you guys can see from my gameplay when i'm shifting with those paddle shifters i didn't have any miss shifts everything seemed pretty good and working well they're positioned in the right spot they're working for me so overall i'm very impressed with this steering wheel in general it feels good it works good and overall it also looks good as well so another thing that I would like to possibly see improved in a future model are these clamps over here that's going to mount down our wheelbase overall the clamps are working nice they're very easy to mount the only thing that I would like to possibly see improved in a future model these clamps only open up approximately two inches that actually is quite big but from my setup I actually needed a little bit bigger even just a half an inch bigger would have probably 
done the trick. So they do work well. They do mount it. It's very easy. All of that. It works well. Like I don't really have no complaints, but my complaint would be if it didn't clamp onto my desk, then I can't really use it that well. So why not just be able to somehow make these clamps open up a little bit bigger and therefore it's going to fit basically on more of a universal type of size desk, no matter the thickness or whatnot. So that is something that I like to see possibly improve also in a future model. So as far as the pedals, one thing that I would like to see improved with the pedal kit is the way that it kind of gets mounted to our sim racing rig for an example. I want to be able to mount the pedals via four screws or four bolts from the top of the pedal kit instead of the current way that we're using right now from being mounted from underneath. Again, I think that would just be more universal and probably more up to date type of an option and a little bit more convenient because right now the way that we need to mount it we actually need to lift up our sim racing cockpit our sim racing rig and be able to kind of screw from underneath which doesn't really make it that easy once we kind of have everything kind of set up it might be a little bit too heavy and awkward to do it that way so it would just be nice to be able to get the pedal kit lay them down onto your sim racing rig where you want to have them positioned and somehow be able to screw them from up top so another idea that I have for the pedal kit that would be nice to possibly be implemented as an additional accessory kit for the pedal kit would be additional springs that we can go ahead and purchase either separately or possibly included on a future model so we can go ahead and change out those springs to springs that are actually uh, stronger and have more of a compression so we can kind of get the feel that we're actually going for so it would just be nice to have a few different types of uh, springs on different types of strength and uh, compression ratios that we can basically go ahead and change out ourselves but again we do have the option here to manually adjust it but just being able to adjust it a little bit more with either a stronger spring would just be a nice option again to possibly see in a future model or even just a simply an accessory kit that we can go ahead and purchase separately so from my understanding and from the research that i've done this v10 is actually pxn's first force feedback wheelbase so overall i'm going to say that yeah there's probably going to be some room for improvement and it does seem like they've been correcting those issues or whatever concerns that the customers have been having with some firmware updates and hopefully a future model will just be even better so guys, overall, my final thoughts of the V10, would I recommend this V10? Yes, I would recommend this V10 kit to anyone that is interested in getting into sim racing. If you do not have any sim racing gear, this would be a fantastic option for the price and the budget and for everything that's included with the kit. Does it work? Yes, it works. Do you have fun playing it? Yes, I've been having fun playing it. So overall, I would say I would recommend it. If you're looking for something with more stronger force feedback, there's might not be the kit for you but I think this would be a fantastic option because it does work it is budget friendly it is fun to play and everything is included with the kit so overall guys that's a wrap for today's video I definitely appreciate you guys tuning in hopefully I covered everything in this video that you're interested in seeing if you guys do have any comments questions concerns let me know down in the comment section down below hopefully you guys have learned something along the way and I'm looking forward to seeing you guys on the next video till next time Peace.